we are now live on youtube i'll just share the link in the chat box you can refer the link uh to see the recording after the session thank you And by the time we begin with the session, it would be really great if you all could tell me what is your educational background and also what are your research interests. It would be great to know more about you all and also um, help us understand what exactly you are looking for so that we could help you with the best. Hi, Hamda. Uh, so, BSc in biochemistry from which uh, university? And what are your research interests as well? It would be great to know in the chat box. Thank you. Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you all uh, for the free webinar on machine learning for biomedical data course. So data science is a desired profession that brings together diverse skills that are needed to handle data and turn it into useful information. Some of the highest paying and interesting jobs are for data scientists at high tech companies like Apple, Google and Uber and also the healthcare companies as well. Areas of science where a tremendous amount of complex digital data is being generated are biotechnology and healthcare.
And these industries are actually relying on scientific discoveries about biology and translating the basic understanding of biological processes into useful insights for drug discovery, improved treatment efficacy, as well as early detection of risks and even anticipation of disease progression. So in this course, we will cover practical and conceptual aspects of machine learning in application to high throughput biomedical data using various tools and R and Python. Throughout the course, so the students will get an understanding of opportunities and limitations as well of machine learning in the context of preclinical and clinical research. My name is Sunalika Ray, and I'm the Omics Logic Community Manager. I'm responsible for daily interaction with thousands of users that are a part of our bioinformatics community, which is managed by Pine Biotech. So before we start with today's talk, I would like to introduce us. We are a US-based bioinformatics company who is working with multiple academic and commercial collaborators to develop easy to use analytical tools. And our mission is to make bioinformatics more accessible. Omics Logic research-based training programs are a result of close collaboration between Pine Biotech and numerous academic institutions that have participated in content evaluation curriculum review and project design. Omics Logic is an international program that is running in five different regions with over 10,000 users around the world. Due to this fast growth, our team is working with local and regional coordinators that are helping refine local program logistics and leverage our online training resources, adapting them to the needs of students and researchers around the world. I'm honored to have been working with a team that collectively has an amazing experience in this area, including the other co-founders of the company. Dr. Alfred Tauber, who comes from a medical background with an expertise in oncology, immunology, and biochemistry of inflammation. And one of his major projects is the establishment of the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center, which has been at the core of what we do. Dr. Leonid Brodsky is the director of Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center and is an expert in bioinformatics and biostatistics. He has numerous publications on bioinformatics and over the course of his career, he has developed multiple novel algorithmic approaches to biomedical data analysis. These have been widely used in basic and translational research in biotechnology, pharmaceutical R&D, agriculture, and basic research. Our platform is a result of hard work by some of the people mentioned here on the right. Julia Panov, who is an expert bioinformatician and helped prepare many of the materials that we would use in the course. Avi Titovsky, who is a computer scientist and leads the development of the T-Bioinfo platform that we would be using. Dr. Harpreet has an expertise in the application of statistical machine learning techniques on biomedical data and the development of prediction tools and databases as well. Dr. Harpreet looks after the curriculum development, bioinformatics and data science course development as well for the omics logic. Dr. Mohit Mazumdar, who is an expert bioinformatician with multiple publications in peer reviewed journals and collaborations in industry and academia has been looking after uh, the companies uh, developing collaborations with universities as a mentor and a project lead for Omics Logic Training and Research Fellowship. Together with our collaborators, we have been building a growing online community of bioinformaticians in training, ranging from high school students to faculty and researchers in top universities around the world. Our team offers big data analysis tools and quality learning resources like courses, projects, and tutorials. In programs designed around various topics, we discuss bioinformatics approaches for processing, analysis, integration, and interpretation of multi-omics data from oncology, neuroscience, agrobiology, and infectious diseases. I encourage you all to sign up now with me for free on our portal omicslogiclearn.com. So let me just post the link to the portal here. Is it 
it is one of the best ways we can explore the world around us at the molecular level with zero equipment or lab cost. So please make sure you are on learn.omicslogic.com. I request you all to please also ensure that you are signed up on the portal as we are going to get some hands-on practice today and also explore the various courses related to data science in the next part of the session. Please type in a one or a yes once you are signed up on the portal and all set for the hands-on practice in the later part of the session. Thank you, can you tell me? I would be giving it a minute for everyone to take their time to go to the portal and sign up real quick. Once you are signed up, please make sure that you have an updated profile. Now, when, when I say updated profile, I mean that you all should have an updated profile picture. Please have your social accounts connected to the profile itself, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and uh, Twitter could be one, and Google, uh, Google Scholar as well if you're there. And then please add a brief bio about yourself. We would be monitoring your achievements here from your profile and you would be able to uh, also look at the courses and the projects, other programs that you are working on right now and get their certificates and download the same from your profile itself. So it's important for you to please have an updated profile and uh, make sure that you have your name in the correct title case and not in caps or in small letters because that's what is going to come on your certificate. Okay, so before I pass it on to uh, Ilya, uh, CEO Pine Biotech, to talk further about the session, I would really like to have a poll just to understand more about you all. The poll would be on for a minute. Uh, Ilya, I would like to pass it on to you. There's some te technical glitch in uh, having the poll on. You can start and after you, maybe I'll just have the poll. Thank you. Hey, could you please make me a co-host at the same time? Uh, yes, yeah, I've made you the co-host. All right, thank you. Welcome everyone to this webinar. I'm happy to see you all and welcome to Omnibus Logic. So what we'll do today is we'll kind of briefly talk about this upcoming program and explain how you can use various resources that we've prepared for you to learn about biomedical data analysis, machine learning, as well as some coding in R and Python. So first of all, why machine learning? Why data science? So as you probably know, some of the highest paying jobs and interesting tasks are being prepared to tackle uh, data in a variety of ways. And especially this is happening in the world of biomedical discovery, pharmaceutical, biotechnology companies. And the major objective for these companies is to take biological insights and translate them into applications. And a lot of times to look deeper, just like we look in the microscope to understand the details of a biological sample, today we turn to computational analysis because the data is becoming more and more complex, large, variable, and essentially knowing how to use some of these tools can be a major component of your job description, or it could be something that just drives your career and is, allows you to explore data sets and gain meaningful biological as well as clinical insights. So we'll talk a little bit 
more about the types of applications in a little bit. So what we want to do in this program is really focus on some of the applications of data science as well as machine learning to different types of data. These data sets could describe challenges in diagnostics. When we talk about clinical applications, they could be discovery of targets that could be applicable to biotechnology or pharmaceutical companies. It could also be for basic research where we look at environmental samples, clinical samples, animal models of human disease, and try to understand what is the data telling us about a particular condition, phenotype, or biological process. Now, I think the most exciting thing is that there are huge amounts of data available for anyone to learn from and analyze on repositories like the National Center for Biotechnology Information or NCBI, where you have layers of information from processed information that has already been analyzed and interpreted and put into review articles or uh, publications, but including all the way down to the raw data. And especially for the raw data, recently there has been an analysis and in 2021, we're over 15 petabytes of SRA data, which is raw data, raw sequencing reads that have been deposited on NCBI. So what is 15 petabytes? 15 petabytes is 15,000 terabytes of raw data, raw sequence archives. Now that includes some process data as well. There's over 100,000 public data sets for GEO, which is gene expression omnibus transcriptomic data. And there are a lot of over 6 million gen bank sequences, which means over 6 million uh, individual um, uh, species that have been sequenced and their genomes have been assembled. Now, a lot of this is driven by what's happening right now. What are the hot topics in research, including clinical research, including basic research? And one of the major drivers, I think, right now is the pandemic, which has brought about almost real-time sequencing uh, to the forefront, really allowing many of us to not only learn about the impact of the pandemic, but also look at how we can contribute to the understanding of this pandemic. Now, when it comes to such a diverse series of data, we need to understand what are the properties and challenges associated with each one. Omics data is uh, a variety of comprehensive views of a particular type of data. Now, a lot of times this is generated using what's called high throughput technologies. These technologies include phenomics, genomics, epigenomics, and transcriptomics. And all of these are relying on high throughput or automated technologies to generate huge collections of data sets. Now, because they are so variable and they speak about different molecular properties, you have to rely on computational technologies to be able to learn from these data sets, analyze these data sets, explore these data sets, and make use of these data sets. And these computational technologies are basically rooted in data science. And so in this program that we're going to uh, introduce you today to, we're going to focus on some of these data science skills that you need to have to be able to efficiently process, analyze, and visualize such complex biomedical data. So what are some of the things that we're going to cover in this program? First of all, we're going to talk about analytical methods, uh, how to visualize and analyze the data complexity and reduce it so that we can extract meaningful insights. We'll introduce you to the terminology for machine learning and artificial intelligence and biomedical discovery so that when you read the paper and you hear about a method, you know what it does and you know what it means. We'll also provide you with some project examples so you'll see how other people have used machine learning. Now, machine learning is used in many different ways. And so you'll see how it's not just uh, clustering or classification, you'll see how different types of machine learning methods are actually used in a variety of tasks related to the whole process from getting raw data to then making it useful for analysis or structuring it, cleaning it, preparing it for 
for analysis, and then finally turning it into a model or learning from it, essentially, uh, using the complex patterns in that data. Now, as a result, what we expect the participant to gain out of this program is to really have an understanding of how machine learning algorithms are used in analysis of omics data. You'll understand the differences between different types of machine learning models and different types of problems that they can be applied to. You'll also see practical examples. So you'll have a sense of how other experts have used this and what are the specific challenges that they had to address to make their project work. And we will introduce you to some of the popular and user-friendly Python and R packages so that you gain uh, practical skills. You can actually use these skills to code yourself and you will be able to read other people's code, understanding what packages are being used and how to use them yourself. And so these are going to include some examples that we'll actually do today in this session so that you get a sense of how can you get all of this done in a short period of time. So the data science program, the Omics Logic Data Science Program, is really structured around these four different things. Understanding the various Omics data types, learning to explore them, then to try big data analysis in the context of a project, and then to understand the link between data and biology. How do you actually master biological interpretation leveraging some of these tools? So let's talk a little bit about the syllabus. So the syllabus of this program is organized into three different parts. Introduction, methods, an in-depth review of methods, and finally, the project section. So all together, we'll have three different sections. The first one is in, we'll introduce you to the relevant terminology and key concepts to refresh your memory and get you started so that you're well oriented in this whole field of omics and machine learning. The second one will talk about methods that will give you a practical sense of commonly used methods and functions for analysis of omics data, starting from exploration to statistical testing to supervised and unsupervised machine learning, as well as deep learning. And then finally, some project examples so that you have a sense of applications for such methods. And after you complete the full program, we hope that you will have the confidence to understand and analyze data that you can conduct independently to a data set of your choice. And we'll also introduce you, by the way, to some examples at the end so you uh, can kind of try it out before you do your own independent work. So the program itself is going to combine interactive sessions, just like we're having today. In each session, you will find additional links to asynchronous resources that review and enrich the covered topics. So it's the live sessions plus the self-guided study materials that you can practice and go deeper into if you want to learn more about the technical, the theoretical, or the application of the particular topic. And as we kind of talk about a lot of topics in general, I want to kind of give you a high level overview of each one of these topics. So a lot of what we are talking about when we say words like transcriptomics, genomics, or metagenomics might be confusing to some of you. And so we will start in the beginning to kind of explain what is the link between omics data, the biological features, the molecular features that they describe, and how can the data that comes from a, an automated process like sequencing can be used to essentially prepare it for analysis. So we want to link together the biological, the technical, and the data components together to kind of make sense of the important terminology and give you a practical sense of what does this data look like and how does it work in terms of using it for data analysis. Then in the second part, in the second part, we'll talk about the machine learning topics, unsupervised and supervised learning. How are these methods used for various tasks, such as visualization, organization of data, finding signal in noisy omics data, as well as things like predictive analysis and feature selection. So to use these methods, you will need to understand how they work. What are the inputs? What are the variables? What are the different settings and available packages that combine multiple functions that make the methods that we describe easy to deploy, right? So you can understand the method in detail, but then as you want to deploy it, you want some user-friendly or some kind of a shortcut 
to essentially launch and train that model. So that's what you will learn in this second part. You will learn to load data, select a method, and run it to get an output that you can interpret for that particular model. Using these principles, we will then review additional methods that are useful for biomedical discovery that include network analysis, such as pathway analysis for biologists, generalized linear models that are used to distinguish between expression profiles of transcripts, for example, and complex transcriptomic data, as well as deep learning models that can be used for specific types of situations to improve accuracy and decrease feature engineering, which is a lot of what conventional machine learning relies on. And then we'll also talk about the need to combine various machine learning models into a series of steps to achieve more complex tasks. For example, when we talk about single cell data. And finally, we will talk about specific use cases that can show you how the methods we reviewed have been used by researchers to find meaningful insights in complex experiments, biological samples, animal models, or patient data. And so with the few examples we review as case studies, you can also then develop a project of your own to fo or follow our asynchronous tutorials to reproduce an analysis that you can improve upon turning it into a novel study. So what are some of these projects? We'll talk about cancer macrophages, which is an important part of the immune system and the immune response to tumor growth. We'll talk about different types of pandemics like enterovirus, malaria, or Ebola virus. We'll talk about modeling cancer precision medicine, where we can find biomarkers and learn how different patients respond to different treatments. We'll talk about tumor microenvironment, but we'll also introduce projects that are not clinical in essence, things like drought resistance or different stresses that are important for crop production and environmental preservation. So as a result, I think that you will really get a full overview of the data science kind of a, a process in biomedical research to understand how different stages of analysis work together to help define the hypothesis, as well as prepare the data for meaningful application of machine learning for big data practical challenges. So as a result, you'll be able to take a data set, make it useful, and then explore it from a biological perspective to understand really what does it mean. As a result of completing all of these different steps, you will also get a certificate. So as already mentioned by Sonarika, you will get the certificate after completing all of these different steps on the Omics Learn portal. So now to kind of explain how all of these different resources are linked together and how to use them, I wanna give you a practical sense of how this works. So for those of you that have not signed up yet, please go on to learnomicslogic.com and sign up and create an account. And then I will show you a couple of just really simple practical examples to illustrate what we will do. So this is the page where you have registered on the Learn portal for this webinar. And as you can see, it explains everything that I've described today. And right here on the top, if you already have an account, we can go to the courses page. And what I will do is I will take one example from the asynchronous materials that we will go through to just kind of illustrate what will be going on. So if you go into the search tab right here on the course page, if you go into the search, go to data science. And you will see here BioML in Python and BioML in R, as well as some additional resources that you can look at. But right now we'll just take one example from this introduction to data science in R. And let's take a look at some of the basic tasks that you have uh, to get started with as you are considering this program. So this is uh, the course. I'm just going to paste the link again in chat for those of you that want to follow along. And in this course, this is again, our coding course two, Introduction to Data Science or BioML, you will see all of the different uh, courses that we have. There's about 10 courses here that go from very, very basic things or how to load data and check for variable data all the way to advanced supervised machine learning, right? So let's take a look. I'm going to use uh, this uh, 
course right here or this lesson right here. Anyone without a paid subscription can access this lesson. It's called Data Processing and Visualization. And basically what it talks about is once you have a table, once you have a table of gene expression, a table of OTU taxonomy in metagenomic sequencing of the microbiome, or whether you have some kind of frequency of mutations across the genome of a virus, you will have a table. In this table, you will have different types of data. This data can include continuous numeric data, such as transcriptomic gene expression. It could have names of samples and names of genes or OTUs. And it can also have categories. So these could be groups of samples that maybe define a particular type of samples that you have. Now to analyze such data, you can explore different methods of visualization that summarize the data in a meaningful way. And that can include cross tabs or pivot tables. They can include box plots that summarize statistical properties of each sample or each group. And they can include continuous data like scatter plots that allow us to find relationships and organization of data that could be potentially interesting from a signal standpoint. So as we go through this introduction, you'll kind of learn about some of these methods, and then we can jump into the breakdown of this code. Now, what's important is, first of all, loading the data. And so here you have an example of how you load a data set that is already on GitHub. Uh, well, this particular example is on our portal, but we'll also be introducing you to how to use GitHub to kind of manage and organize your code as well as data sets. Then you can pre-process and transform your data for analysis. So here you can see that we can, for example, prepare the data matrix from the data frame that we have to create some numeric data for analysis. Then you can also uh, load a library. A library is just a compilation of different functions that are going to be useful for the analysis and streamline your analysis. And in that data, you now have an option to create a visualization, like a box plot, right? So after we learn about how this code is organized and what are the different elements of this code, we can actually go in to practice it yourself right here in the browser. So let's go into practice it yourself. And let's try over here to run this analysis. So you see that now you have a console, you click on run. And after this step is complete, you have a message success running code. And essentially you get an output that was predefined for you to make sure that you're following the steps. Now here, nothing really has to change. It's already made for you. What you can do though, is you can check what's in this data. So let's go in here and we'll edit it. And we will put in head df, which is the name of our data frame, to understand what is in our data. So after we have calculated the mean, which is right here, we now see what is in our data. Now, this is a little bit difficult to understand. As you can see, there's a lot of different columns. There's a lot of different numbers. It's not very clear what do they actually mean. A more useful way to look at this data is to actually visualize it. What's in it? And so here we have a scatter plot, plot, box plot, histogram, and heat map. But all of it is connected into one single piece of code. And as a result, we might be a little bit confused as to what exactly are we looking at. So let's modify this a little bit. Here we also have descriptive statistics, converted into matrix, draw a box plot, a heat map, and a histogram. So let's start with the box plot. So we'll just remove this run it, and now we have a box plot. Now, what is a box plot? A box plot essentially shows us how the data for each sample that we have on the x-axis can be summarized using the interquartile range, maximum and minimum values, outliers, as well as the median line for each one. This gives us a sense of what's in the data that is fairly complex. We have here a bunch of samples, and inside each sample, we have certain level of variability 
that we should be using to understand differences between what we see right here, which is the names of groups or conditions that we're trying to interpret. Now, what's important about this visualization is that it should immediately give us a sense of how ready is this data for downstream analysis, right? So if we want to analyze a difference between normal-like samples and let's say basal or luminal breast cancer subtypes, we want to understand that within each group, there's some consistency that we can rely on to make sure that these samples accurately represent the condition that we're studying. And that is really what this whole course is about. This course is going to go into the detail of the code, but also link it with the biological question that you're trying to ask to really understand what is the process of going from raw data to an answer to a question that is either biological in nature, clinical in nature, or has some interpre interpretable uh, insights for somebody working in industry like biotechnology or pharmaceutical. So with this, I want to really make sure that it's clear that in the context of the program, we will cover a lot of topics in sessions like we did today, going through code and running examples. At the end, you will be able to download all of this code. You can copy it and we will use what's called Google Colab to make sure that all of the code that you work on is not only tested automatically in, on our platform, but also is reviewed by someone so that at the end you come out with a whole series of uh, full code from beginning, loading, exploration, finally to training a machine learning model and then interpreting your results. And all of that, by the way, is going to be integrated on your own profile. So at the end, when you share your outcome, you will see all of the different projects and all the different courses that you have completed. You will also have the option to develop an independent project. So here, after you have a certain number of points, after you've completed the minimum requirements, you will be able to apply this to a data set of your own, essentially turning it into a mini publication that starts from uh, submitting this project right here on this learn portal that will guide you through all the different steps that you need to take. And then you can actually use this to maybe go for a poster presentation or a full publication if you have a meaningful project. So with that, I want to make sure that I answer any questions that you might have before I pass it on to Dr. Mohit Mazumda, who will talk about some of the methods that we will discover in this program. Are there any questions? Okay, so if there are no questions, I will pass it on to Dr. Mohit Mazumdar. He's a computational biologist and a project mentor here with Omics Logic, and he will talk to you a little bit more about the curriculum, how to sign up, and where you can find all the relevant information. Over to you, Dr. Mohit. Thank you, Ilya. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Mohit Mazumdar and I am a bioinformatician by education. And since last 12 years, I have been practicing and applying bioinformatics for research and now both for student-driven research projects and academic and industrial collaboration. So during my PhD, I learned to apply machine learning algorithms to variety of sequence-based uh, data sets and were able to design and complete several research projects that are now published in peer-reviewed journals. So with this um, incredible growth, I think big data has turned out to be a remarkable career choice for many today. Industries from various domain offer different positions uh, for big data professionals. That includes biology and healthcare too. So some of the topics that we are covering in this, uh, in this program are quite relevant to the industry. So uh, from a data perspective, I think we have already heard from Ilya a lot about it. So what I think is what makes biology unique from other realms is, uh, is its sheer size. So I, I think that for example, like for example, if I have to give you an example, 
a typical genome of a microbe uh, which might have 4000 genes and if we assume that there are like 1000 meaningful distinct variants for each gene then that's like almost 1 billion samples to test so i mean if you if you consider that sort of uh, volume of data it's it's really really very big so uh, genomic researchers, they utilize biomedics to speed up processes related to analyzing DNA sequences, ultimately helping informed teams looking to combat a given disease. So COVID vaccines and cancer research are two areas of genomics that is greatly helped by bioinformatician and uh, bioinformatics. Similarly, in the case of drugs um, uh, as vaccines and future cancer treatments, current pharmaceuticals can also become more efficient and they are moving in the that direction with almost instant analyzation capability afforded by bioinformatics, right? And machine learning. Machine learning helps to make databases more searchable and trackable by biologists whose human understanding and instincts are paired with power of AI. And that power of AI can create a kind of an investigative ecosystem. So that's something that we all are looking forward to. About this program, I think, uh, uh, our team and industry within our team and with our industry and academic collaborators contributing in developing this unique program that takes you through the omics logic learning experience and provide hands on training through the powerful eBuy Info platform. So uh, let me tell you about the intended outcomes and some of the learning objectives of the program. So some of the things that we will be doing is that we will be learning about the terminologies for machine learning and artificial intelligence in biomedical uh, discovery. We will be understanding the analytical methods for processing, visualizing, and analysis of complex biomedical data. Uh, we will be understanding the uh, machine learning taxonomy and also the commonly used machine learning algorithms, which are used to analyze different kinds of biomedical data. We will have hands-on practice in application of standard unsupervised and supervised machine learning methods to various types of data such as genomics, transcriptomics, metagenomics, imaging data, and clinical data. You will be becoming familiar with project examples where machine learning was used effect effectively to achieve meaningful results. And then you will be able to understand differences between machine learning categories. Uh, I mean, categories of algorithms in different machine learning uh, algorithms in different categories, uh, which would be like what kind of data sets they are good for uh, and what kind of problems they are good for and they are applied to. And then we will understand about different applications of machine learning uh, in the aspects of project design uh, objectives. And then we will learn about Python packages for data visualization and analysis of uh, and, and using analysis using a machine learning methods by Python. And then apply machine learning techniques to analyze public domain data or your own data set. So those are some of the things that are intended to uh, come out of this program. So uh, this course uh, and this program is designed as a combination of online resources. Then there will be practical assignments and uh, there will be live sessions, live workshops that will be conducted uh, through Zoom. And throughout this program, we will review several project examples that demonstrate the success or the limitations of conventional machine learning methods and also deep learning uh, methods using data from public repositories. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the sessions that what sessions will be the next. So I would wanted to give you an overview of what is coming next. So in the next session, uh, that will be the second session. Uh, we In this session, we will learn about various omics data that are generated through high throughput technology and contains detailed information. For example, genomics, transcriptomics, uh, metagenomics. And then we will learn about the overview of approaches and we will learn from used, use cases for various types of machine learning algorithms for clustering and classification to visualize and interpret multi-dimensional data. Uh, the fourth session, uh, in this session, we will overcome some of the challenges uh, to compress complex information into an interpretable visual representation, uh, visual representation accurately. And in the fifth session, in this session, we will learn about the very critical challenge to organize data 
using complex patterns in a space. Uh, that is beyond human imagination and we will be in the multi multidimensional space as i said and in the sixth session we will be learning about the application of uh, supervised machine learning for classification in this session we will be learning about uh, how do we train or uh, training an algorithm to find and use patterns that we think are meaningful uh, in the seventh session, in this session, we will learn about feature selection and gene signature construction. And uh, after that, in the next session, we will be using regression and uh, uh, generalized linear models to understand relationships in data by finding associations between a pattern and uh, influence. And then uh, in the next session, which would be the ninth session, and this would be in November, uh, we will be learning about the system of interaction between many players, for example, across tissues, uh, across time points, or across individuals. So uh, after that, uh, in the 10th session, we will be combining uh, machine learning methods and we will be understanding that how machine learning methods and with predictive modeling, we are going towards uh, automation. So uh, we will be learning up from some project examples uh, to uh, understand how machine learning is helping in automation. And then in the next session, we will be diving deep into the um, deep learning to make a network of deep learning approach, which is uh, we will learn for classification. So there are different types of deep learning methods uh, that we will be learning about and implementation of uh, time series data. And then uh, it would be about the project. So after learning and applying all these uh, different uh, tools um, that are available for, for a data scientist to be applied on different types of biological data, we will be want, we would be working on uh, with participants to develop a project or to be able to work on group projects or ongoing projects. So here we will be discussing about project design, uh, understanding of the used cases for data analysis, and the need for uh, you know data structuring uh, for before you go to the analysis and while doing this we will be also taking you through some of the examples and those examples are from clinic so in the clinic uh, in the clinical condition i'm sorry let me go back to the previous slide yes uh, for the clinical condition i think uh, we would be talking about um, biomarkers uh, diagnostics treatment and also drug repurposing. And after that, uh, we would be talking about the industry uh, challenges. So we'll be talking about pharma and biotech companies and their need for machine learning and data mining, um, and data mining projects. So overall, we will be taking you through some of the resources and some of the problems from the 20th century and learn about the importance of these technologies in the future. And uh, we will be using uh, um, uh, uh, tools such as R and also Python to extract meaningful insights from large biological data sets, learn, practice, and achieve biological greatness with concise exercises and interesting challenges right in front of, uh, in comfort of your own browser. So that is one of the advantages of this program. And to tell you more about uh, the resources and, um, and the data sets and the opportunities, I would like to uh, invite a community manager, uh, Ms. Sonalika, and I will be happy to take any questions that you might have uh, for me. Uh, so we have a very consistent question coming up that what about the beginners? Uh, how will they start with the languages or let's say data science or machine learning? Because there are a lot many topics which are covered here. Uh, so could you please highlight on that? Yeah, so actually that is being something that we discussed earlier also. So this this is not just based on the live sessions, but you will have an you will have access to all the asynchronous courses. And right now, Sonalika will take you to the asynchronous courses that is actually built for anyone. So anyone from biologists to clinicians, from experts can learn from those asynchronous material. So those courses are designed in a way to make sure that you go through uh, the content and learn about what we will be covering sessions too. 
So I think if you start going through that material, which is uh, available online and you can do it from actually anywhere, I, I think that would be really helpful for you to go through the sessions and interact with our mentors and design a project. So all of this is, this is possible when you start from, uh, if you are starting from scratch and that is from the asynchronous material on machine learning, on different type of omics data, on different type of application projects, everything is available on Learn Omics Logic. And uh, I think Sonalika will be able to show you how you can get started there. Thank you so much, sir. If there are any other questions, you can post in the chat box and we would be uh, glad to answer them. Now I'm going to launch the poll to know you all better. And my first question is, what is your current level of education? And uh, my second question is, what are your research interests? I would be keeping the poll on for 30 seconds. I request you all to please uh, vote. Those who have completed their vote, please make sure that uh, you go along with me. Make sure that you are on the portal learn.omicslogic.com. I'll just share the link real quick in the chat box for you all. Now, as Dr. Mohit mentioned that we have a various asynchronous materials which will help you get started with the program. So let me just guide you through the asynchronous material first of all, and then we'll go towards the program and registration. Let's give 10 more seconds for the poll. Okay, thank you everyone for casting your vote. I'm just ending the poll now. So once you are here on the Omics Logic portal, you would be able to find few bars here as courses, programs, projects, and research. Go to the courses tab and just type introduction and you would be able to find a lot of introductory courses. So if you are new to bioinformatics, let's say you are from a biotechnology background or microbiology or biomedical, and you have no clue of what bioinformatics is, but you want to begin with that, then make sure that you go through and explore this course in introduction to bioinformatics. We have various introductory courses on R and Python as well. So let's just go through one of the introductory courses. You can just begin with the introductory courses and then have the basic knowledge and uh, you would definitely be able to go along with all the session material there. So these are a few of the lessons which are there on the uh, in the course of introduction to data science for Python. You could also practice each and every code block on the console itself like Ilya showed you and uh, help you practice with few of, of the stuff. So uh, you need not install any Jupyter notebooks or stuff, but actually just learn the code and practice it then and there. Now coming to the program page, how you get to the program page and how you register yourself for the program. So visit the programs on the Omics Logic Learn portal and just find the program that is machine learning for biomedical data science. Now, once you are here on the program page, you would be able to find all the details that are related to the program and also the schedule of the program and the session topics that are going to be covered on various dates for the program, the title and also the topics that would be covered. And once you uh, scroll down, you would be able to find three levels that are beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels. Now, these levels are being divided just based on the prerequisites uh, that are being provided for these uh, each different levels. And you can enroll yourself for whatever level you want to based on uh, the facility that you would like to uh, gain from the program. You just have to click on the select option and proceed with your payment checkout gateway. 
Also, you would be able to find a list of courses that are recommended to complete for the program. And also you would have the access to each and every program here. The introduction program, BioInfo and Python, by uh, then the R and BioML courses there as well, where you will learn about statistical analysis and machine learning. And also we have various specialized projects here in the courses tab itself, where you could learn how different sorts of analysis could be applied to solve a research problem. And then how you analyze or interpret the results from the server. So now let me just take a minute to help you navigate how you have to reach to various projects that we have and also the courses. So if you wish to uh, view the courses that are available under the courses tab on the learn portal, just click on the course and you would be able to find all the courses that we have. So I was just talking about the bio ML course. I would really like to take you through that as well. And those who uh, want to carry out a research project, a bioinformatics research project, but come from a different field, they can definitely take up this course and learn from it. And then the projects which I was talking about, you just have to click on the projects and you will get a list of sample projects that we have in which we have tried to analyze a lot of uh, different sorts of fields, including the data sets and then how you reach to the final analysis, how you run the pipeline on the server, get your results, and then you, how you interpret your results to uh, get biological meaningful insights. And also those who feel that the program cost for them is not uh, right uh, right now and or if they're very busy with their uh, ongoing research or their ongoing commitments to their institute, they can definitely go ahead with taking a basic subscription for the Omics Logic Learn portal where they would have the access to all the courses and all the projects that are present here under the courses tab on the Learn portal. They can begin with uh, going ahead to have an understanding of these various courses. And once they feel that they are now ready to uh, go ahead with the specialization maybe, then they can definitely go ahead with taking the program enrollment and uh, advance their knowledge of research. So we have a few of the questions. Uh, so no, no Mala, all these courses are, uh, Yes, they have one particular fee that is a basic subscription dollar 10, but you need not pay the fee individually for each and every course. The dollar 10 includes the access to all the courses and all the projects that are here on the course uh, under the courses tab on the learn portal. Sonam is asking, I'm exposed to Python art omics pipelines machine deep learning in an intermediate expert level, how would this program help me? So I would like Dr. Mohit to please uh, help you, Sonam, with this question. Uh, over to you, Dr. Mohit. Okay, so let me take the question itself. So Sonam, you are saying that you have already an intermediate or an expert level for uh, the various fields, Python art, omics, and also uh, omics pipelines and machine and deep learning. I would like to ask you, have you implemented these different sorts of concepts to carry out your own individual research project or not? You can unmute yourself maybe and let me know that. And also when uh, you say that you have an intermediate or expert level for these different fields, is it specific to bioinformatics or to carry out the biomedical analysis or just in general, uh, you know, about the basics and stuff? Yes, Ola Q, you are uh, perfectly right. The $10 allows you to explore all the courses without the mentor support. So I'll tell you what exactly dollar ten does. So let's say if you go to the transcriptomics course, uh, like whichever course you go to, you will find some start content on the course. Just a second.
I think I have a slow net. Yes. So when you go to the courses uh, tab, to, uh, whatever course you want to explore, you will find few of the uh, lessons that are unstart and many of them are start. So the $10 basic subscription is basically to get you the access to all the start content that is there uh, in the courses on the uh, Omnic Logic Learn portal. And to talk about the server, where you are going to uh, carry out the pipelines and run the analysis and then get your results and try uh, learn to interpret them. For the server, for the $10 basic subscription, you would just get the access to few of the demo pipelines here. So you already have the demo pipelines where the data set has already been uh, uploaded and you just have to run the pipeline just to learn uh, how the pipeline could be run using the different algorithms and what these algorithms are actually doing uh, at the back end. The knowledge to that would be given in the courses. And then you will get the result from this one pipeline and you can then analyze the result and uh, interpret your uh, results accordingly. And how to interpret your results have been very well explained in the courses as well. So that is why taking the courses to uh, run the pipeline and actually learn how the pipeline has to be run and how you interpret the results is, is important. So let's do just one pipeline real quick. So if you click on start, the data has already been uploaded. You'll get to know what these different modules are uh, trying to do at the back end. So once you click on start, the next step is Trimomatic, which gets highlighted, right? So you have to click on Trimomatic, and after that, the next se the next session that gets highlighted is PCR clean. Now, once you click on PCR clean, then the next step would be highlighted that is Bauti 2T, the next algorithm. Now, to understand what is Trimomatic, why is it required, what is PCR clean, again, everything is mentioned in the courses itself. So, this is the way how you can run your pipelines and get the result. And then you have to click on the RSM expression table uh, just to get your expression table and simply end the pipeline. So you see how easy it is that you could uh, quickly run a pipeline and then you would get your results and uh, analyze them accordingly. Any further questions? Okay, so now I'm dropping in my mail ID in the chat box. It's marketing at the refine.bio and you can reach out Dr. Mohit at mohit at the refine.bio with any queries or issues uh, you face and you would like to proceed with. And uh, also let me just quickly share with you the link to the program page and also the link to the basic subscription which you can take and go ahead with uh, learning about the various courses that are available on the Learn portal. Please find the pricing module here for the basic subscription. And Sonam, I'm waiting for your answer. If you are here, please let me know. And here is the link to the program page. Okay then, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, so we do have great scholarships for that, Ola. I'll share the scholarship form for you. We don't want that the financial burden should actually uh, crush someone from learning out anything the way you mentioned. So we do have great scholarships that we offer to students who are... Uh, in the field of this research and uh, very much motivated to learn a lot. So Ola, please fill out the scholarship form. We'll just review your application and then we'll get back to you with the possible scholarship that could be provided to you for uh, this program. Thank you everyone for joining and have a great day. It was great having you all with us today. And uh, don't forget the mail IDs. It's marketing at the bio and move with at the bio. And okay, Natalia is asking, 
how do you decide whom to give scholarships so in italia when you will fill the scholarship form you are supposed to upload your cv and also you are supposed to give us two references right based on your cv and based on your prior research experience or let's say your knowledge or your background we are uh, going to review the applications based on that i hope that answers your, your question natalia thank you so much everyone for joining great perfect Bye-bye, take care.